before I play this, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I had no idea who any of these chicks were, and it wasn't until I started watching it when she was talking about her past and how some guys would shy away from her because of her past. And I was like, okay, well, what is she talking about? What does she do in her past? And she started talking about dropping out of school in grade eight, uh, joining a cult or what seemed to sound like a cult, going to jail and working in porn. So it turns out Lana Rhodes is a porn star. Um, news to me, maybe not news to some of you guys. Uh, apparently a popular one too. She's got well over a hundred scenes from what I could tell when I Googled her name. Um, lady's got a big notch count. I can tell you that. And she's sitting here lecturing on what trophy wife training looks like with her two other friends. So let me throw these in here and we'll get this ready here. Okay. All right. So I got it queued up here. Um, I got a few notes. So before I start playing this, because this is her summary of all of their points. Um, she talks about Tumblr and what trophy your wife training looks like from the perspective of hypergamy. She completely butchers what hypergamy is um, on the sexual marketplace, but she basically distills it down to uh, gold digging and women seeking men that are of higher education and of greater wealth, which is somewhat true, but she misses, you know, many of the finer points, which is to be understood. You know, the women go on uh, their social apps and the tumblers of the world and they'll, they'll go and learn a new term, hypergamy, and they'll go talk about it in their three girls in a kitchen cast and try to educate ladies on uh, why that ties into trophy wife training. But anyway, she goes on to talk about uh, sexual partners and how a friend of hers got dumped. Uh, because this dude found out about her uh, sexual past. And, you know, she goes on to talk to the ladies how sexual past shouldn't matter. Uh, women will lie to other women about the irrelevance of their sexual past. And I'm going to share some data that I have so from some men here on two different surveys that I did in the last two weeks. Because I figured at some point I had to cover this topic. So it segues in nicely that she's got her trophy wife training video and I've got my data on what men really like. So, I'm going to cover her stuff first right now, and then we'll get to what guys like. And we'll do some Q&A call-ins today uh, as well. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What does she ramble on about here in my notes? Rambles on about style making a high-value women. Again, I'm not going to play all this because you guys can go and search the cast and watch it all if you want because it just causes problems with YouTube. But she rambles on about how style makes a high-value women. Truthfully, most guys don't care that much about style. I mean, as long as she's fit not overweight and she knows how to put on, you know, a decent outfit. It <laughs> doesn't look like a slob. I mean, you'll find most guys are happy with <laughs> even a woman in some form fitting yoga pants, to be honest with you. She rambles on then for even longer about fake lashes and how that's important for high value women. She rambles on about perfumes, which I personally can't stand women that just like drink perfume because they just reek of it. Hurts your nose, hurts your eyes. A light dusting is fine, but she puts a lot of emphasis on fake lashes, perfumes, style. Oh, they also talk throughout this cast about um, this term bad bitch. Or uh, actually, it's queued up here, so you're going to hear what she's talking about. Because you're going to hear them you know, do a little dance when I play this for you in a moment. But they go on several times. One, two, three. I counted four times where they reference each other as like bad bitches or boss girls. And, you know, I talked about this earlier in the week on my social feed and men don't care about being around women that have bad attitudes. They don't want to be around, you know, miserable women that think that they're bad bitches. I mean, for the most part, what I found anyway, and, you know, I want to hear from you guys in the comments, but whenever you hear this, uh, you know, this term boss girl or hashtag bad betcher, whatever it is. Um, they're usually disagreeable women with a bad attitude and they think that they're something like a dog walking business makes them, you know, like a boss girl, you know, they walk four dogs a day and they think that that makes them a, a boss girl and they have it all together. Men don't want that. They don't want disagreeable, you know, terrible women like that. Um, points, high value male read. Oh, she goes on to tell women that if you want to be attracting high value men, Read the Wall Street Journal, read Stoicism, watch documentaries, 
build puzzles. Oh, um, oh, and she talks about why men love bitches. Apparently, there's another cast, which I've, I've been told that I need to look into as well, which is based on a book called Why Men Love Bitches. Um, and all the hobbies and interests that, that she's covered in its completeness is really built around doing puzzles, reading a newspaper so that you're up to speed on stocks and watching documentaries. And that's what's going to draw in a high value man. Now, you notice the title of the YouTube channel is uh, Laura Rhodes, three, it's 3G1K, Three Girls, One Kitchen. So why are they sitting in a kitchen and not cooking? Why are they not showing you know women how to make a sandwich? It's just them talking about bad bitches, her, her, her past with prison, her past in porn, her giant notch camp, which she suspects guys should look away from. So let me give you the summary because when I started listening to this, she sounds like a nice, pleasant, you know, girl off the bat, but there's a lot more to it. So here you go. Listen to this. Let me just turn this up some so you can hear it. Oh, hang on. Wrong page. There we go. That one. There we go. I'm like that's my best friend. She's she a dance. real bad bitch. She, she, don't don't she don't need no lift. So this this like mad bitch. It's throughout the whole thing. It's it's pretty it's pretty gross if I'm being honest. I mean that's just my perspective. You guys shout out in the comments, but we've got these three girls in a kitchen doing no cooking. No culinary skills are being presented. They're not telling women to know any kind of culinary skills. They're just sitting there with their giant ass mugs of coffee and listen to the summary now. So all in all, a trophy wife is a high value woman. And, and you know, keep in mind, this is this is her summary of it. It's it's not the other two chime in at, at this point. But oh, look in the background. They have um, aprons here. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Our eyes. She's well-rounded. She has hobbies and interests. She she works on bettering herself every single day, whether it's physically, mentally, educating herself. She's. I feel like the motor's running, but nobody's behind the wheel when she's talking here. Like, okay, let me carry on. Finish it. Bounds herself with good people. She dresses for herself, not for other people. And she just loves herself and puts all her energy in. She loves herself. She puts all of her energy. She dresses nice. Blah, 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 blah. It's like none of those things show up on any of the lists that I ask men to, you know, dispense when they provided lists of what they thought was a high value woman. Effort into building herself. And then when she loves herself so much, she'll be ready to go and find someone else to love. Yeah. And, and she'll she love that man and be a great, great woman to herself and to that man. Yeah. And she becomes surprised. Yeah. And she's surprised because of all that, because she's done some puzzles, uh, watched a few documentaries and, and reads the Wall Street, Street Journal. I mean, the like, you know, when when we talk about solipsism here and how women are are innately solipsistic and they can't see past their own noses, they don't know what men want. They think they know what they want. All they do is they paint this picture about, you know, just do a few puzzles and watch some documentaries and read the Wall Street Journal from time to time and dress nice and put on some perfume and have eyelashes. And it's like, okay, that's kind of a start. <laughs> you know, like look nice is, is, is good. But let me show you what guys uh, say when I surveyed them. So let me pull up the first one here. I'm going to take this out of the cast and add another screen in just a second here. Let me cue it up. All right, share, uh, stop, and do, 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 share screen. There we go. So I just screen captured this off our Rule Zero page because I surveyed uh, the group in there. There's a few thousand guys in there. So these were the top five. A lot of them added extra ones, um, and I had to clip those out just because there was um, – can I make this bigger so you guys – there we go. Um, so I just summed it down to the top five. So what they voted on the top one was respectful and in my frame. Men want women that are respectful to the men and operating in their frame. By the way, they don't operate in your frame by default. You have to give them a reason to operate in your frame. You have to be a high value, uh, you know, sort of top shelf guy that they're willing to, um, yield to, if you will. Second thing was youth, beauty, and sex appeal. 
the optics of beauty, shocking, you know, of course that's important. Now this one's kind of interesting because this is, this is a little bit more on the blue pill side of things when people say trustworthy and loyal. What I did was, and I'll show you the other survey that I did where people added all their comments. There was like close to a thousand on there. It was, it was really a lot for me to go through. And I took the ones that popped up the most. So trustworthy, loyal popped up a lot from guys in the comments section of the community tab where they're saying, I want a trustworthy and loyal girl. Assuming, you know, that they've probably been, you know, maybe their trust was betrayed in the past and they got cheated on or they got dumped for some other dude. But the thing that you always have to remember as a guy is her presence in your life is never permanent. It's, it's you know, um, what did uh, Chris Rock say in his stand-up tam uh, tambourine? Uh, women, children, and dogs are always loved unconditionally and men are only loved under the condition that they provide something. Women are only going to be trustworthy and loyal to you. Most, you know, for the most part anyway, will only be trustworthy and loyal so long as you add value to their lives. Um, you put yourself in a position where you're no longer employable. Um, you know, thing, thing, you know, circumstances change in that relationship. Don't be surprised if she bounces on you. So don't ever lean on, you know, trustworthy and loyalty being a feature that you're going to look for in women. They're only as loyal as their options. So if you're the best option, you got them. You know, the days that she wakes up back to back, you know, weeks and months in a row where she no longer sees you as a, you know, as the best option and maybe Kevin in sales becomes a better option. Don't be surprised if she bounces, you know, they're only as loyal and trustworthy as their options. So you want trustworthy and loyal, get a dog. I said this before, I'll say it again. Um, next one was submissive and feminine. You know, that was number four. Uh, femininity, you know, surprise being a feminine woman, which, which, you know, to their credit, they have the optics of femininity. Uh, but they do state at the beginning of that cast that they are all a feminist, uh, which is why you don't hear them say anything like, learn how to make a sandwich for your guy. You know, trophy wives should know how to make sandwiches. You don't hear them say that. Submissive is, of course, very important to, to men. They don't want to have, I mean, they don't want to come home after conquering the world, putting a dent in the universe, working on, you know, their craft, whatever it is that they're doing, and then be, you know, browbeaten by some angry feminazi that's going to like henpeck them throughout their evening. Um, they want, you know, they want an agreeable, pleasant woman to be around, which, you know, brings me to the next point. You know, the fifth one was uh, pleasant and agreeable. Yeah, Alex says so very true, 100%. 